Hello everyone, welcome to day 30th of April Lead Code Challenge. Today is the last day of the month and after solving today's question, all of us will get the April batch. This will be the 12th batch over last one year and yes, we have solved each and every question from past 365 days without fail. My name is Sanjit Radeja to, to introduce myself. I am working as software developer for at Adobe and here I present day 671 of daily lead code problem. The question that we have in today is evaluate division. So here they have provided us with few equations, their values and followed by queries. What do we need to do? We need to evaluate these queries using the values that are present in, as part of equation and the values array that we have. So I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it by the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to it. Lead code 399 evaluate division. It's a medium level question on lead code and I also feel the same. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to ping on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded. Both the links are mentioned in the description. So do check them out. So let's take the same example that was specified in the equation and also remember by analyzing these equations and values together, consider them as a single unit. What does this mean? Let me just walk you through that. So here it, the, the first entry in the equation represents a comma by b. That simply means a by b evaluates to 2 and the second entry is b comma c. So that means b, b by c evaluates to 3. So consider these equations and values as an atomic entity. Do not consider them as separate value, separate data. What we need to identify, we need to identify the value of a comma c that simply means a, a by c. The next one is b by a followed by a by e followed by a by a followed by x by x. So this is a wonderful example because it covers all the possibility of test cases that we can have. And let's talk about the algorithm. How are we going to arrive at these values using the data that we have in the question? Now let's try and understand the queries part. So if you carefully look at the first query, what do we need to evaluate? We need to evaluate what is the value of a by c and how that can be done. So let's walk through the equations and the values that we just analyzed. Uh, we have a by b as 2, b by c as 3. So what we can do, we can simply multiply these two values up. And what do we get? We get a by b into b by c. So b and b in denominator gets cancelled with b in numerator and the value left is a by c. So what that value would be? It would be equal to 2 into 3. So you can figure out that using multiplication across these values, something can be figured out. And that this equates to 6. Now comes the question, how can we actually process this information so that we reach the required queries? That can be done using graph. How? Let's walk through the same example. So what we are going to do, we are going to build a graph. How are we going to build this graph? Let's go step by step. The first entry that we see is a comma b and the value happens to be 2. So we'll build a graph starting from a and it goes up till b with the value of 2. So let's write 2 here. So consider this as an entity where that signifies that a by b happens to be value 2 pretty straightforward. Along with this, we'll also store another value in our graph. That would be b by a happens to be 1 by 2. So using this information, you can reverse the denominator with numerator and the value will, be get, will get updated to 1 by 2 instead of 2. So these two equations are exactly the same. So we are also going to store this information in our graph. So b by a represents 1 by 2. So this information you're also going to store in the graph. Pretty straightforward. So at each entry there are two values stored. The first one is the character or string and the second one happens to be the value. So again it would be of type string comma double. So let's represent it over like this. So each entry, each connection or each edge is represented by the starting node which would be again of type string and uh, the value would be a map of string comma double because string will represent the node up till which the connection goes and the double value represents the value part that we derive from the values array. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 
b comma c so let's do the same thing again so b by c happens to be 3 so again a new connection with it will be established and here it would be equal to b by c happens to be 3 so we'll store this information again in the graph so right now we have three nodes a by b is 2 a, b by a happens to be 1 by 2 and b by c happens to be 3 along with this we'll also store an information that c by b happens to be 1 by 3 so this also makes sense to us now comes the question how are we going to find out the queries part so let's get started let me just highlight all the uh, nodes that we have built in the graph so these are the four nodes and let's get started with solving the queries let me just change the color of pen the first equation that we see is a by c so what we can do we can start the dfs traversal or the vfs traversal anything of your choice what is the starting node the starting node happens to be a that means uh, we will look out for a node in our adjacency matrix or the graph so the first can and we can go on by traversing in this graph via dfs traversal or the bfs traversal so the first node that we see is b so uh, the value here is 2 so let's store this value 2 and for, let's proceed ahead now from b there are two options the first path is from b to a since a is already visited we will not go on to that path again the other path that we have is from b to c and the value here is 3 so let's proceed towards that path and what we are going to do we'll multiply this value from the previous value that we have traversed so far the previous value that we traversed is 2 so 2 into 3 gives us 6 and what do you see here you see that this happens to be our terminal node for the query a comma c therefore we will abort the process and return whatever product we have identified so far while traversing starting from the a node up till the c node and the value becomes c the final answer becomes 6 as 6 is the answer that we found we will simply return the value for a comma c as 6 so this we are done with this equation the rest of the equations are really simple here it's b comma a b comma a is if there is a direct connection over here you will simply return 1 by 2 then you will go for a comma e you can see that by when you traverse in the dfs fashion starting from a node and you keep on searching in this graph you will never witness e node therefore what you should do you should break the dfs once the traversal is done all the traversals are done and you will simply return minus 1 in those cases so answer here becomes minus 1 next is an interesting case and that says a comma a when you have, whenever you see that the target value happens to be equal to your source value uh, you should check whether this source value is present in your graph or not if it is present then you simply return one in those cases this case is an exclusive case that we have to handle uh, out of the regular dfs operation now let's look for the last case where we have x comma x again the values happens to be same for the source and the target however x is not part of our graph as a result of which we will simply say minus 1 for this particular query so these are the four cases that we discussed and let's quickly walk through the coding section and i'll exactly follow the same steps as i have just talked here so the first thing that i have done here is to build the graph using the equations and the values array that i have so let's walk through the build graph helper method and then we will look out for the rest of the algo so build graph is really simple you create a graph of type uh, the key happens to be string as i talked in the presentation the value happens to be again a map of type string comma double where this signifies the target uh, this signifies the value that we extract from the values array so let's write it in a better form this is my source or start comma map will have end comma value now let's start the iteration so you traverse over the equations that we have you extract the starting element you extract the ending element you extract the value element you add it into the graph one connection would be starting from start up till end and the value would be val the other connection would be from end up till start and the value here would be one by val rather than the val because you have reversed or swapped end with start once you are done with this you simply return this graph back to the caller method and let's go back to the caller method now what I have done here, I have created the answer array that is of return type double because the question itself tells us to do. Then we go ahead and start reversing over the queries that we have. And also I have created a visited set for the DFS reversal which will be needed. So what do I do? I check whether my source which is query.get at 0th index happens to be equal to my target value. If that is the case, then I go ahead and check 
whether my graph contains the source or not if it does contain contain then i can simply say that the answer for this part would be uh, 1 and i increment the value of i so consider this as i plus plus and in case my graph doesn't contain the source that simply means you you cannot find uh, that value in your graph you'll simply return minus 1 in those cases and this is it uh, i have incremented the value of i so this this is an important corner case which people often tend to miss out and once i'm done with this uh, what do i do i invoke the dfs method for the cases where my source is not equal to my target i invoke the dfs method and whatever value is returned from the dfs met helper method i simply set it to my answer and i proceed ahead with the next traversal in the end i simply return the answer now the problem reduces to writing this dfs method appropriately so the first parameter signifies the source the second parameter signifies the terminal con terminal node followed by graph and the visited array that we have created or set that we have created so in case my graph doesn't contain my start what do i do i simply return minus 1 in those cases in case my graph contains start and uh, this uh, that at that particular node i can see that uh, there is an edge up till the end so what do i do i simply return the corresponding value there moving ahead i simply update my start node to visited set and then uh, what what have i done i have iterated over all the entries of or all the connections that i have starting from the start node and i check whether the uh, key the terminal node was visit was part of the visited set of or not if it is not part of the visited set then i invoke the dfs traversal on that and in case the value returned from that dfs traversal happens to be not equal to minus 1 that means the path does exist so i multiply my current value with entry dot get value and re return it to the caller method if this condition is never met that means by the dfs traversal the value returned was minus 1 and uh, in those cases the path doesn't exist as a, as a result of which we have simply returned minus 1 in those cases signifying the dfs was not met successfully so let's try this up accepted with this we have successfully completed all the questions of the monthly challenge april 2022 and this is our 12th batch without fail we started our journey from may uh, 2021 and today at 30th april uh, we have solved all the questions over the entire year starting from may uh, till today and uh, we have in total got 12 badges so if you remember this video i'll be glad and there's another announcement that i would like to make that is i'm going live today and the agenda for this live session would be let's celebrate the achievement uh, this is our 12th batch 365 days without fail it's a big achievement in itself apart from this i'll be giving away a surprise amazon gift card to one of the daily contributors of coding decoded github repo who have solved along with me all the questions and submitted solutions over there for the month of march 2022 last but not the least i'll be going over your doubts in a live in this live session so i'm pretty excited about it I, and i hope you guys will be able to find time to join in and i'm looking forward to seeing all of you there